Today, we're going to be looking at wisdom in the family. Uh, there'll be something for parents, something uh, for teenagers. Uh, and I think it's just really important at the start to say, I'm not an expert. Uh, like every parent, there are things that I've got terribly wrong that I wish I could start again. Some things, by the grace of God, have, have gone well. Uh, and I think all of us as parents know what it's like uh, to have struggles, to uh, have moments where it's really, really difficult, um, but also moments where it's just a real joy. Uh, and hopefully some of uh, what we're looking at in Proverbs will reflect that. If you're watching this and uh, you're not a parent, uh, it may be that you've not been able to have children or yours have long gone. I still hope that this morning is going to be important and helpful because it just gives you an idea of it in a sense of the shared values that we want to have as a church family. Because parenting is often a lonely task and actually the more people we have around us who understand and who support the things that we're trying to do, the better it's going to be. Uh, I just called the first slide an elephant in the room. Let's just deal with that uh, straight away. It's really important to just to think through how we read and understand discipline when we read it in the Proverbs and also how we understand things like spare the rod. Uh, do we think the Bible teaches that corporal punishment is essential? Uh, I would say no. I think it's really, really important to understand when uh, Proverbs uses language, it's using the language and the culture of the day. So when they're saying spare the rod, that was in those days the way in which children were, uh, were disciplined, in which they were told off. Uh, it, it has until very, very modern times still been uh, the norm in most countries around the world. But of course, as we uh, understand much, much more about child welfare and child well-being, uh, as we've studied it, in a sense, how they grow uh, and the importance of positive parenting, uh, we understand really that uh, that's not the way to do it. Uh, and therefore, when we read Spare the Rod, what we need to kind of interpret that as being what the Proverbs writer is saying is, look, the correct way of disciplining and enforcing boundaries, however you choose to do that, it is what we're talking about. So please don't think when we hear uh, discipline or things like that, that we're jumping straight to corporal punishment. We're not at all. Um, and it's just important to, to make sure that we all understand that actually the Bible doesn't teach that it's okay to, to, to beat your children. Uh, that's never okay. I've got four uh, T's for you to help us uh, go through the slides. One is about a task, uh, one is about touching the heart, uh, one is about training, uh, and the final T is about truth. Firstly, uh, Proverbs uh, sees the, the raising of children uh, as a really, really important task. Uh, and how we do it and doing it well is really important too. Uh, and what these, uh, I think, Proverbs referring uh, help us think a little bit about is the fact that uh, behaviour is learned. Consider language. Uh, we all know that language is a really, really important uh, tool of communication, but also uh, language is something that was learned. Um, but also not just the language itself, the things that go with it. So when we lived in Sheffield, I, my mother tells a story of going to, uh, to see one of her neighbours, concerned that I was, as I was uh, approaching four, I, I never seemed to speak English at home. Uh, and she was always, she went to the neighbour and said, I'm really worried about Dominic. He seems to understand what we're saying to him. But actually, every time we speak to him in English, he always answers us in French. Uh, and the neighbour turned around and said, oh, that's fine, she said. Uh, every time he's here, there's not a word of French spoken. He speaks perfectly fine uh, and everything is great. Uh, and clearly, and those of you who've got children who speak multiple languages, uh, uh, and I'm sure many of you have, uh, children know when to speak in one and when to speak in another. You've not ever had to draw a list and say, well, when you're with grandma, this is the language you speak. When we're in a holiday with this family, this is the language we speak. It, it's instinctive. They pick it up. They learn it. And just with language, behaviour is the same that we are modelling behaviour to our children all the time. Not just how to behave, but, but when to behave. Uh, they repeat, in a sense, the things that we do. They look at us and they evaluate us 
Uh, and they make decisions for themselves based on what they understand us as doing. Uh, and therefore, it's really, really important when we raise our children uh, just to think a, a little bit, even when we're not thinking about what they, we are trying to teach them, actually what it is that they're learning. And statistics bear that out. It's just really, really interesting uh, to see that actually for uh, children and young people who've grown up in a stable home, whose parents are together, are far, far, far more likely, and it's something like 60 to 70%, more likely to be in long-term relationships themselves than those who've grown up in situations of difficulty or, or marital breakdown. Uh, and that's not just to, to uh, say anything other than uh, what they see is what they learn and it's the behaviour that they find able to replicate. But it's not just about relationships, isn't it? It's about our approach to work, how devoted we are to getting tasks done, whether we start things and finish things, whether actually we value different things. Those are the things that uh, we will teach our children. And yes, it's about putting boundaries in place, but also it's about uh, them seeing in us uh, whether we're thoughtful, whether we're caring, whether we're inquisitive, uh, whether uh, we like learning, whether actually we're able to take a step back and contemplate and come to wise decisions. It's really, really important, therefore, that just the way we are around them it is understanding, in, in a sense, as a parent, that actually what I'm doing is I am shaping my child. Each decision I make it, and each, each decision that they see me uh, take and every action they see me take is, is modelling to them something that they will grow into. But if you're a teenager watching this, uh, you're probably thinking, well, actually, I'm not quite sure that my parents are great or uh, I, I'm not really sure that uh, I, I want to do things the way they do things. And that's absolutely fine. It's great, isn't it, as a teenager to be able to push boundaries to explore your own limits. Uh, and it's right that you want to think for yourself and you want to not just have an inherited view of life that comes uh, with your upbringing, but you want to work out uh, what is right and good for you, yourself. Uh, and of course, it's a difficult time, can't it? But can't it be that often parents find it difficult when teenagers want to take on their own values and their own lifestyle and their own preferences? Uh, and sometimes it can be a, a, a real struggle and a fight uh, and things can be said and behaviour can be done that can be really, really difficult. Uh, as parents too, we need to understand that our teenagers need to grow and uh, find their own feet in a sense and that we mustn't do things that in a sense clip their wings such that they so resent us that they can't actually wait to leave home. But it's important if you're a teenager and you're experimenting and you're thinking about what is right in terms of behaviour and what is right in terms of what is acceptable and what isn't, that, that I just remind you of the story of the prodigal. He was the one who was at home. Jesus taught this parable. He was the one that was home, had everything, thought, do you know what? It's just so much better out there. Uh, and he ditched it all uh, and went for things that he thought would be good. And of course, I'm sure you know how that story ends. It doesn't when, uh, end particularly well, uh, as he realises that uh, uh, actually what he thought was great uh, was not great. Uh, and I'd just uh, say a couple of things to you if, uh, if you were uh, a teenager and you're just reading that story and reflecting on it. Just be honest with yourself. I think one of the hardest things as a teenager, isn't it, it, it is recognising that uh, maybe that you've kind of got it wrong, but you've kind of talked yourself into a corner and actually you don't know how to get out of it. Uh, and I would say just be honest with yourself. Actually, if this is not turning out the way it want, the, the way you wanted it or the way you thought, or some of the decisions have consequences that you hadn't foreseen, just be honest with yourself. Don't persuade yourself it's great when it's not. Uh, and also, don't, 
don't be stubborn. The feeling that actually somehow your whole life will fall apart if you turn around and say, actually, that wasn't such a good idea. Or actually, I've decided not to go that way after all. It's really, really important not just to be stubborn about the choices that we make. Uh, and actually to be able just to talk through with them uh, with somebody else that's got a little bit of wisdom. And if, if talking to parents is really, really hard, then actually talking to maybe an adult you trust who will bring a different perspective. Don't feel that you've got to uh, struggle through everything on your own, determined to make it work uh, just because it was the choice you made and you don't want to lose face. And I think that's the other thing I'd say from the prodigal son. Don't forget the way home. When actually he did those things, when he faced up and was honest with himself about how awful it was, when he realised actually that he would, he talked himself into something that was just ridiculous and actually uh, that he didn't want to carry on like this, he found his way home. Uh, and of course, uh, his father was there with arms uh, welcoming him. I think that's just such a message, isn't it? About just not going somewhere so far and so fast and so hard that actually we can never turn back and come back to those who love us most, to our parents and say, I, I, I don't think that's right. Can, can we start again? Can we put things right? Can we maybe just do it differently from now on? It's really, really, I think, important uh, lesson, I think, to learn uh, just about the task of what it is to grow up, the task of what it is to be a parent. Uh, and I suppose what I'd say as well to teenagers is that uh, what enables you to come back is not going too far. It's really, really easy in our confusing world that's confusing in so many different ways about our identity and our worth and, uh, and who we are. And I haven't got, a, don't really have time to go into all of those, but it's so easy to get lost. So don't stray too far until you're really certain that you've got a guide that's with you, showing you the way. And of course, for parents too, as important as the task is, as we try to shape them and we try to direct them, uh, and we try to, to in a sense, uh, be imaginative and creative and loving in the, in the way that we are, it's always important, important, isn't it, just to keep the door open so that always conversations can be had so that always those who've made mistakes can return. That it isn't just said, oh, well, that's it. You've made your decisions. You've got to live with it now. And of course, this is why it's so good, isn't it, to have this as part of a church conversation, as part of a church service. Because, of course, we need um, uh, uh, other um, adults around us who are not our parents, maybe, that we can turn to. A trusted adult or a grandparent. I, I know for me, when things were really, really hard and my parents just didn't know what was going on with me, Actually, it was my godmother. She's just great. Uh, and she was always there, always listened. Just every now and again had a, a word of advice that I listened to. But it's really, really important, isn't it, that we have people like that. Uh, and even if we can't do it for our own children or grandchildren, uh, there may be others that we can do it for. The next one I've called Touching at the Heart. Uh, the idea of, of discipline, not just as uh, behaviour management, so easy, isn't it, as a parent, just to get into behaviour management, because, you, you know, you take your kids out in the park and, uh, you know, you don't want them squabbling after five minutes or you don't want them kicking and screaming in a supermar supermarket aisle uh, uh, when they're kind of two, you know, and, uh, and just kicking and screaming and it's just like so embarrassing. We've all been there, don't worry, we've all been there. <laughs> Um, and of course, it's really, really easy just to try and, as a parent, manage behaviour. But I think what Proverbs says is touch the heart. That's really important. If you've got older teens, you know, what is it that keeps you awake at night? Is it what they're up to, the actions of that particular moment? Or is it what it says about their character and their values? And that's the really important thing, isn't it, with um, being a parent, that it's important in a sense that uh, we look at their character. What does it make? And how can we encourage them to be wise in their decision making? For always telling them what to do, they won't actually learn that wisdom. How can we uh, discover ways in which we can parent for wisdom? 
or thoughtfulness. Encouraging them to think about their actions, to think about consequences, to be able to think about the impact on others. Uh, and of course, encouraging that caring nature. Uh, you know, we laugh in, in our own family because, of course, uh, it, in our kids, like I'm sure in all families, uh, different ones, that different members of our family have those different strengths. And uh, you're thinking, well, we've raised our children all the same. How come they've turned out different? But it's that kind of that idea of encouraging inquisitiveness, encouraging learning, encouraging them to, to think and be the person that they need to be. And so if you're a parent, it's good to think, what am I doing that's prompting those characters that I want them to have? How are they going to learn to be caring? How can I teach them to be caring? How can I model it? How am I allowing their character to emerge? Uh, we had a very, very inquisitive child um, and we, we, seemed, we ended up kind of having uh, two word conversations. It was, why? And the answer was always, because. <laughs> because we learned that there were times when uh, if you answered the first why, then there was another why and another why and another why. Uh, and of course, at times you really, really struggle, but you want to encourage that inquisitiveness. So there are other times when you go back and you do spend uh, time answering the why and the next why and the next why and the next why. And of course, if you never answer any why questions, then that kind of inquisitiveness it is just rammed down in them and they, they won't learn to do that. And so it's really good, isn't it, to, to be thinking not just about their behaviour. What am I seeing in them in terms of character? How can I encourage that? How can I develop things maybe that they haven't uh, shown so, uh, so forth, uh, so haven't shown forth so much at this stage? Really good to be thinking about character. But you notice the next proverb actually talks about values. And of course, what do they hold dear and what will they grow up and become adults holding dear to? Well, probably either what you're like or just the opposite. But therefore they will learn, won't they? Um, what is your approach to work? How do you handle the work-life balance? Are you there for them? Are you never there for them? Do you make sacrifices or is it always what you want that counts? How do you interact with your family, your wider family and friends? All of the things that you show by your decisions are of value to you. They will begin to learn in a sense their, um, their system of values. It's particularly in England and I know here too, it's always one of those things that are around Sunday sport. If you're a family that's sport, that's into sport and loves their kids to do sports, then it's a challenge. Do I value sports more than church? How do I get that balance of giving them the things that they need, but also the things that are really, really important? And actually, is it okay to not go to football club for two or three weeks and then pitch up after a three week gap? Uh, and or not, and if it's not, but you, we, we approach church in a much more casual way, what is that saying to them about the importance of church and football, for example? There'll be other things. It's often in those unthinking moments, we're not even saying, it's just making decisions that they're learning their values. So help them see what is important to you. Help them to understand why. That if actually you're saying, well, we're not gonna do this because and help them see the values behind your decision making. It's really, really important. And of course, uh, the third uh, proverb there on the slide uh, talks about righteous. Uh, it talks about faith development, clearly about something that's not just learned in church and Sunday school, but it's, it's learned at home. It's learned through the way that you are, the way you talk, the way you pray, the way you value church. Um, Nathan's been running some uh, Parenting for Faith courses. If you're really interested in, in this, do talk to him uh, about when we might be able to do some more. And of course, faith is relational. It's about the relationships that we keep, the relationships with our friends, our neighbours, our church family, our relationship with God. Uh, how are you teaching and training and forming your children in righteousness? 
Uh, and of course, what this also uh, helps to think if you're a teenager thinking a little bit about uh, uh, values and character is that so often as a teenager, you live in the moments. Uh, that's why this pandemic has been so hard, hasn't it? Because it's just been the totality of, uh, for some of you, of your sixth form experience, of your university experience. It's just, it's everything. But one of the things actually as a teenager that is really, really good just to hold at the back of your mind is uh, as you're holding out for something or arguing over something or, or really holding on to this is a must do, uh, ask yourself just quietly, how important will this be to me in five years time? If it's uh, something that's causing a real difficulty in the family or amongst your friends, just ask yourself that. Will I still be bothered about this in five years time? Fourth slide talks about training and discipline. Uh, and you can see uh, some of those uh, slides there that just talk a little bit about both the joy, but also just in, in a sense, some of the, the decisions that are, are not good. You know, that actually, if you're the glutton and gluttony is something that's learned over a period of time, that actually it, it's a way of life that you walk in and therefore the way to not walk in it is to walk a different way. And that requires willpower, it requires effort, it requires action. Now, maybe it's not gluttony for you. Maybe it's music or sport or uh, it, it's, uh, I, there are all kinds of things, aren't there, that where we get drawn in. And actually what's hard is, wouldn't it be great if we were all, uh, good at all of the things straight away? Wouldn't it be great if we could do all the things that we wanted to without any efforts? And of course we can't. Life isn't like that. We are sinful, broken human beings. Uh, and even when Jesus is our Lord and Saviour and he comes into our lives and rescues us, it's still just really, really hard. And we have to learn. Uh, if you go to a gym uh, and you want to be able to, you know, to develop as a swimmer or a rower, then there's continuing, um, uh, there's continuing practice and repetitions. You do it over and over again. Uh, if you've been watching the Olympics, you'll know that, uh, you know, somebody like uh, Sky Brown and, uh, and the, the Japanese skateboarders that are also a similar age to her, they've been doing these tricks over and over and over and over again since they're about five. To get them to that stage, there's just no shortcuts. And it's the same too, isn't it, it's with the people that we want to be. There's no shortcut just to be cheerful, friendly, smiling, um, generous. We have to work on it bit by bit, little by little. And therefore, as uh, teenagers and young people that we need to, to want to, to engage in that ourselves, uh, as uh, adults, we need to be patient as we encourage, as we stand by, uh, as we pick up when they fall, to make sure that they get the support that they need as they are training in what it means to be who they are. And then finally, uh, I've called uh, the last one, uh, truth, the importance of truth. Uh, in, the, in, in the Gospels, Jesus tells us that the spirit of truth will lead you into all truth. Uh, and I think what that's saying, in a sense, is that uh, God's spirit will open our eyes. It will now enable us to see who Jesus is uh, and how we can follow him but also how we can walk with him in a sense that day by day of what it means to be a disciple. Uh, and that's a really, really good news that actually what might seem a really difficult task is actually a, a, a godly task and God has given us his spirit to help us. But of course, uh, his spirit will only help us if we, if we allow God's spirit to be at work in us teaching us what the scriptures want, helping us understand, even in a society where uh, the values can be very, very different to the scriptural values, why God's word is as it is, why he wants us, our wonderful creator, sustainer and redeemer, uh, why he wants us to be living this way. Uh, and that's the really good thing, I think, is that we're not just lost in a complete uh, openness of every choice is good and whatever you make is fine. But actually we have a God who loves us and a God who says, look, let me lead you in the right way. 
Let me walk alongside you. Let me enable you. Let me give you gifts that enable you to be this. Let me see the fruit of your endeavour at work in your lives. And that's why we gather. Because God hasn't just left it up to us. He said, look, this is the way that you can live. And if you can live this way and follow my my promptings, then my teachings of scripture, the work of the spirit in your life, then actually it will be great. Great as a parent with a responsibility for children, great as a, a young teen and young adults as we find our way that we're not alone. Uh, I mentioned earlier that it's really important that we have a guide uh, alongside us. Uh, I didn't say anything at that point because it's my final point, but Jesus can be our guide. He's given us the spirit. And so let's be encouraged and hopeful because of that.